There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about ethanol usage in Australia and discussed and evaluated the current usage. In this video, we're going to cover the next dot point, which is all about the molar heat of combustion. So when we read the actual dot point, the dot point says define the molar heat of combustion of a compound and calculate the value for ethanol from first-hand data. There's two parts to this one. It says define the molar heat of combustion and calculate the value for ethanol from first-hand data. So I'm going to show you the definition of it. And then I'm going to take you through an animation as well to try to help um, make sense of that definition. And then we're going to have a quick calculation at the end as well. So I'll start with the actual definition. The definition of uh, molar heat of combustion is the heat released when one mole of com uh, combusts. So one mole of a compound undergoes combustion. So one mole of a compound, compound could be ethanol or octane or anything else, undergoes combustion. So how much energy is released? how much energy or heat is released, how much energy is released when one mole of a substance or a compound, such as ethanol or octane, undergoes combustion. Combustion that occurs, for example, in our engines, right? combustion. So this is the equation for complete combustion. So complete, complete combustion for ethanol. So here we've got C2H5OH, that's ethanol. And it's liquid because that's a, a petrol, like oil itself. It must be liquid. So when that is in the actual engine and it combines with three oxygen molecules, which are gas, when they combust, we have these CH bonds, which in the animation you'll see clearly, but we have these CH bonds. And when they break, so when they break, we have a release of energy. And that's where all that energy comes from, is most of those breaking of those hydrocarbon bonds. And there are quite a few of them in this um, ethanol molecule. And once that's broken and new ones have to be reformed, we can't lose molecules, we can't lose atoms, so new ones are, are formed. And the ones that are formed from one molecule of ethanol and three molecules of oxygen are two molecules of carbon dioxide and three molecules of water. I see the product. And the CO2 is the thing that obviously contributes to global warming. And that comes out of the exhaust. So CO2 comes out of the exhaust. Now this is the complete balanced equation for complete combustion of ethanol. And the amount of energy released, so this is the total, so delta C is the change in heat, change in heat, that's what delta H stands for, and that C is for combustion. So the change in heat or, change, or the release of energy when the combustion occurs is 1,378 kilojoules for every mole. So here we had one mole here. For every mole, we release this much. When it comes to octane, octane is a bit different. It's a different molecule. So this molecule here is octane. And with octane, we have CH, C8H18. So we only have these hydrocarbon bonds. So there's more of these hydrocarbon bo bonds than um, with ethanol, which is why when they break, Overall, one molecule of this, one mole of this, will release more than one mole of ethanol. Right? When these break, these CH bonds, that releases energy. We've got a lot more in, in one a molecule of octane, or one mole of octane, than we do in one mole of ethanol. But when one mole of octane uh, combines with 12.5 mol moles of oxygen in that combustion, that reaction, we form eight molecules or eight moles of carbon dioxide and nine moles of water. And you can see, as I mentioned earlier, that amount that's released in the complete combustion of octane is minus 5,470 kilojoules per mole, which is a lot more than minus 1,367 kilojoules per mole as is in ethanol. So one mole of octane releases more energy than one mole of ethanol. Um, and now I'm going to show you quickly what happens if we have incomplete combustion. So this is incomplete combustion of octane, this formula here. So again, we have um, this here, which is octane. Really ignore this ethanol part up here. It's octane. 
And what happens is we only have eight and a half. We had 12 and a half for complete combustion, but we only have eight and a half for incomplete combustion. So we actually have less oxygen than we had beforehand. And that's normal. That actually happens quite a bit when it comes to octane. And the problem is if we have less oxygen, what we're going to form is here we formed eight C eight um, carbon dioxide molecules with complete combustion of octane. But because we have a lack of oxygen, what's going to happen is we're actually going to form eight molecules of carbon monoxide, which is one here. It's carbon monoxide. This is carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is really poisonous, which means it will kill or it will um, poison people that it comes in contact with more poisonous carbon dioxide. So if you have incomplete combustion, that's really bad. I mean, it does produce a bit less energy as well compared to complete combustion, but the main part is it produces carbon monoxide as opposed to carbon dioxide, and as carbon monoxide is poisonous. And the problem is when it comes to usually when we, we uh, combust octane, it's not, not usually complete combustion. In most cases, in, incomplete combustion because we don't have enough oxygen to make complete combustion happen. I'm going to show you now the couple of the animations that should hopefully kind of drill in the point that I was trying to make. Um, the first animation I'm going to show is ethanol. So here we have one ethanol molecule. And in a second, you're going to see these three oxygen molecules, one, two, three. You're going to attach or attack this ethanol molecule. And then combustion occurs. Right? That boom stands for combustion. And what you can see is you can see these... Um, CH bonds breaking, and as they break, we have a release of energy. Now that everything's broken, we have a reforming of compounds, new compounds are being formed, and these compounds are the two carbon dioxide compounds and three water molecules, H2O molecules, right? So we went from one ethanol and three oxygen to two carbon dioxide and three water molecules. Now when it comes to octane, what you can see here is we've got one octane molecule, so CH88 CH8, CH8H18, and we have 12 and a half of these oxygen molecules. What's going to happen is they're actually going to attack its octane molecule. Combustion occurs. Again, that boom is combustion. You're going to see all these CH bonds breaking. And there's a lot more CH bonds here than there were with um, ethanol, which is why there's more energy being released. Now we have the new f bonds being formed, new compounds being formed. And those compounds are the eight carbon dioxide molecules and the nine water molecules. So overall, more energy was released, but this is complete combustion. I'm going to show you quickly what incomplete combustion looks like. So here we have that same F, the same octane molecule, sorry, and we have eight and a half oxygen molecules. Again, they attack, combustion occurs, energy is being released, and then you have a rearranging of atoms. Newborn, new bonds being formed, but the problem is that we have now we have eight carbon monoxide, not carbon dioxide, and we have nine water molecules. And these carbon monoxide are really poisonous, which is why incomplete combustion, which often occurs with octane, is a problem. I hope that animation was useful. And what I'm going to show you guys next is how to calculate things when it comes to calculations. So this question here says, the question is, how much heat is released when one kilogram of ethanol combusts? So we have this formula, n equals m, small m divided by big M. Small n is number of moles. Big, um, sorry, small n is number of moles. Big M is mass. And big M is mass of mole. So we have given 1,000 kilograms. This is the mass, so small m. So M, small m is 1,000 gram. How much one mole weighs, we can calculate. So we have here, we have C2H6OH, that's our ethanol. We need to find out how much this one mole weighs. We know 2 times 12, because one carbon weighs 12, so we've got two of them. We need to do 6 times 1, because we have 6 hydrogen, each weighs 1 gram. And we have one oxygen, so that's 1 times 16, because one, higher, one oxygen weighs 16. So when we put that in our calculator, 2 times 12, that's for our carbons, plus 6 for our hydrogens, because we have 6 of them, and plus 16, because we have 1 oxygen, which weighs 16. So it's 46. So we have 
as our mass of one mole, that was 46 grams. So then if we type in 1000 divided by 46, so 1000 grams, that's how much we have in total, and divided by 46, that's how much one mole weighs, we can find out how many moles we have, and that's 21. So our n, n is 21.79. And next step, we have our number of moles, but we want to find out how much heat is released. So one mole releases this much, one mole releases 1,367 kilojoule, and if we have 21.79 moles, all we have to do is have number of moles times how much one mole releases. So 21.79 times 1,367 and that is 29,717. So 29,717 kilojoules minus um, 29,717 kilojoules. That's the amount that was released when we combusted one kilogram of ethanol. And that was using that first hand data to calculate the combustion of ethanol. It's important when it comes to comparing ethanol to octane that we take in consideration that octane often does not go to full combustion. In, a, in an actual um, engine, we often don't have enough oxygen. You can imagine an, an actual engine isn't a very nice place when it comes to trying to breathe. There's not much, so don't have enough oxygen. There's not enough oxygen. And what that means is if we burn octane, because it requires so much of it, it requires 12.5 moles of it, that means that what comes out of our exhaust, so the stuff that comes out of our exhaust, can either be CO2, which is carbon dioxide, or CO, which is carbon monoxide. And this was the poisonous one. This was poisonous. And the problem with octane is we often produce quite a bit of this. And that is a problem because it's, that kills our health, more or less. And carbon monoxide is um, what causes smog and different types of pollution. So that's one of the advantages of using ethanol. It produces only carbon di dioxide, whereas using octane also produces some carbon monoxide as well. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.